Today we're going to talk about something called the compositional relationship in our scripts. This is what we call a has a relationship. And that's something that I've mentioned in the last video where we talked about inheritance, but I kind of just glossed over it. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is a has a relationship, how do we do compositional relationships, and when would we use those versus inheritance. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by giving you a better understanding of how to write C-sharp code in Unity. If we keep with the same car example that we were using before, we had the example of it has a windshield, it has some seats, it has some wheels and so on. And it's really important to distinguish this has a relationship from the is a relationship that we talked about in the last video, because these serve two different purposes. Many newcomers will first learn inheritance and then try to apply inheritance to solve all of the problems and that ends up abusing the system and you might end up getting stuck with I don't know how to achieve whatever result you're trying to get because it is not the right relationship to use. So remember if we're taking our code example from the last time, we had countdown auto destroy text and we had auto destroy text. Both are a mono behavior, but we also have the extra layer of countdown auto destroy text is an auto destroy text just with some additional behavior. And remember that was the is a relationship that we got with inheritance. In both of these classes, they were composed of some variables and a text mesh pro text UGUI component. That's where we're getting somewhere, right? We've already been using composition this whole time whenever we're giving properties and specifically today we're going to be talking about giving references to other classes inside of that one class. By having the text mesh pro text UGUI component as a compositional relationship with our auto destroy text that allows us to delegate the responsibility of text rendering, layout, all of the stuff that that class does to that class. So that way in our auto destroy text, we don't have to have everything about how to render text, how to format it, doing the rich text stuff, whatever all TextMesh Pro does for us, we don't have to do that in our class. We're delegating all of that responsibility over to the TextMesh Pro UGUI component and just telling it, please display this text. That's one of the huge benefits of a compositional relationship is it allows us to delegate responsibility to some other class to do whatever they specialize in that way our class stays clean and focused on whatever we need it to do. This might be a little bit hard to relate to, so let's talk about some animals instead. Let's pretend we have an animal class and we have a dog and a cat. Both of these are animals, right? So that'd be an is a inheritance relationship to the animal. Maybe we also say that like a lion is a cat, a panther is a cat, etc. Those are all going through the hierarchy there. All of these animals, dogs, and cats have different properties and some similar properties. For example, the cat has some fur, the cat has some claws, the cat has a tongue. Each of these things may have some behaviors associated with it. For example, the tongue may be able to lick. And that's where we're getting somewhere. Each of these, we'll call them an object, have different properties and behaviors that can be associated with them. Imagine for a moment if we had to define all of the behaviors and all of the properties for everything about a cat at the cat level. This class would become enormous very, very quickly. That's one of the problems that composition solves, as we were saying earlier, is you can delegate out responsibility and definition of some of that to another class. For example, the tongue class could have all the properties about the tongue and all the behaviors about the tongue. So like that lift behavior would be defined on the tongue class instead of on the cat itself. Before we get into the next section, I want to talk to you about another awesome deal happening over at HumbleBundle.com. Unity's partnered with Humble Bundle since 2018, and this year they're bringing in a really awesome bundle about software tooling in Unity. A lot of times this isn't the most sexy topic, but this bundle delivers. There are some really great tools for Unity in here, such as Unistorm, which brings really high quality, different stormy weather into your game. That's almost drag and drop. 
Another really awesome asset in this bundle is Destroy It that I've been watching for quite some time and it looks really awesome. It brings in the ability to destroy any game object in your game very easily with customizable runtime destruction. It basically solves a bunch of different math problems and mesh slicing problems for you. Now I will say I haven't personally used any of these tools. I've seen a lot of videos about these. I've seen Reddit posts. At a minimum price of $30 to get up to the 26 bundle items, including a 10% off the Unity Asset Store, I would say this is a phenomenal deal. This bundle only runs through September 22nd, 2022. So make sure you hop over to humblebundle.com, first link in the description, and review all these items to see if they're gonna add $30 or more worth of value to you to help out your game. The second problem that Composition is solving here is imagine if, let's stick with the lick example, the cat has to lick something, but dogs can also lick. So then we have to have dog lick, cat lick. Not all animals can lick, so then you end up maybe having a very deep nested hierarchy of inheritance here to try to say, hey, licking animals can go here. But that doesn't really make a lot of sense to have as a layer of inheritance for. So then you might go, okay, well, we'll have an eye licking animal interface that defines lick. Then you're implementing that lick on a bunch of different animals and it would be a lot nicer to be able to define how do you lick one time in maybe a tongue class and then just give that ability to all the animals that need to be able to lick such as dogs cats whatever if you still need the interface eye licking animal or whatever so that way you can on the dog allow something else to control whether it's going to lick or not you could do that as well but you don't have to actually implement anything on those interfaces, you delegate that off to the tongue class. So two of the common problems that we run into if we're trying to define a bunch of inheritance relationships for this are number one, it allows us to delegate out responsibility from that main class to another class. We have better separation of concerns between what does the cat define and what does the tongue define also gives us code reuse there because we can then apply that tongue to a bunch of different animals. So that way they can all do licking and whatever else a tongue can do. Second problem that it helps resolve is having really deep nested inheritance trees and also allows us to kind of prevent us from having to make changes in there that may propagate to a bunch of subclasses that could be having maybe unexpected and unwanted side effects. That's why you'll hear a bunch of times people will say you will favor composition over inheritance. The way I worded that is key. That's like the keyword to search if you wanna go Google research that some more. Inheritance has a place. It's extremely valuable and very powerful. It's just also possible to abuse this or to design yourself into some trouble here. Frequently we can use composition instead of adding a new layer of inheritance to kind of mitigate some of those problems I just described. Whenever we're thinking about relationships, it's important to think about them some way, and I, I like to do it just plain English up front. Whenever I'm designing some class, is it an is a or a has a relationship? So is an engine a car? No. Is a car an engine? No. A car has an engine. That tells me that on my car class, I will have an engine property. It usually gives me a pretty good starting point for how I should design the class. If you run into some gray areas where you're not sure, should I do this with inheritance? Should I do it with composition? One thing I like to do is take a step back and look at my current scope. What am I trying to implement? Think about if I do this inheritance, what problems might I run into? If I do this with composition, what problems might I run into? That'll usually give me a direction at least, but then I like to think about it a little bit more and say, in the future, what are my goals for this thing? Am I going to expand on it or is this it? Usually there's gonna be some idea that comes in and we need to expand on. If we're talking about the homework, there's a lot of different enemy types. Probably the enemy scope will expand. So think about some possibilities for that and think, okay, is the way I'm designing this right now? It may be fine, but in the future, if I wanna do this or that or the other, maybe this doesn't scale the right way. Maybe if I did it this other way, that would be a lot easier. If that's the case, then I will choose that second design, even if it's a little bit more cumbersome to start with, because in the future, I know I'm gonna make some changes. 
and I don't want to have to go back and rework everything later. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to show your support, you can go to patreon.com slash Academy, get your name up here on the screen, and get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. At the phenomenal tier level, there's Andrew Bowen, and at the awesome tier, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Paul Barry and Rulin. Thank you all for your support. I am so grateful. All right, homework time. I'm not going to show you what I did to solve last time's homework because what I want you to do is take this new information about composition, new understanding about composition, and apply that to that same homework that we did last time. So we were talking about last time to create a boss, a ranged enemy, and a melee enemy, right? The way I worded the question was a little bit leading. So you may have made a boss class, an enemy class, a ranged enemy class, a melee enemy class. That's fine until maybe you want to have an enemy that can attack with both melee and ranged. Now you're in a weird spot because, oh, I do I inherit from ranged or melee enemy? Well, maybe I don't do either of those. Maybe I come from enemy, but then you need to copy paste a bunch of code from both ranged and melee enemy into the other one. So I want you to go back, think about all of this with the compositional relationship in mind and see how would you structure this again, keeping in mind that there may be a different way to help solve some of those problems. So to recap on that, what it is, I want you to design some enemies, a boss, a ranged enemy, a melee enemy, and point out the problem. Also a melee and ranged attacking enemy. Design those enemy classes using inheritance, interfaces, and composition to describe how they should look. So the enemies will have health, maybe you define the attack behavior somehow, and give them skills, for example. Send me a link to your GitHub repo that has this structure, and I'll take a look at it and give you any feedback. The compositional concept, I think, isn't that hard. We've already been using it repeatedly throughout everything. It's just a matter of thinking about how do we encapsulate out self-contained behaviors like the tongue, for example, out into a separate class that can hold all the properties and behaviors of that particular object. That way we can remove that responsibility from our main class. Again, like the Text Mesh Pro encapsulates all the text rendering features, all that kind of stuff away from our countdown auto destroy text and it handles everything for us. We just say display the text. If you've been getting value on this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's a new video is posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.